Welcome everyone. Welcome my cyber bodies and my fleshy babies here as well. So today I'm your cyber witch for this afternoon and if you're wondering what a cyber witch does is I study the evolution of internet bodies in conjunction with um, digital technologies and think about the implications that this enmeshment conjures. So today's talk called From Angels to Swamplings um, is a little bit of a journey across all the different bodies that you can see um, across the internet. Um, but in order to start that odyssey, I'd like to um, start with a small introduction of the hybrid body. So what I define as the hybrid body is a body that is negotiated between the digital and the physical, the metaverse and the meat space, and it generates architecture for hybrid environments and modalities where it pushes the boundaries of presence. So we're all witnesses of the evolution of art in conjunction to te with technologies, but thinking about how is it created shared and accessed by audiences beyond the conventions of the art world. Each new digital technology is just another creation that springs many conversations about its effect on our perception of self, its rapid introduction, democratization and evolution, which shifts it from just, a, from just a solidly technological landscape to a multi-layered cultural one. So with the addition of new layers of culture emerge new desires, come new interpretations, critiques and reflections of these um, implications. And um, I think that with the democratization proliferation, proliferation of digital technologies, we have seen artistic discussions about their implications and how they might affect the self and society, where technology itself plays a role in mediating. Um, and allowing these mediations to occur. So, I would like to kind of introduce the digital native first before we go on our little audience. <coughs> so, I think, you know, exponential technological progress changes the way we create and upkeep relationships. This is nothing new. There's a lot of conversations already about that. Um, and thinking about the effect on our values and our hybridization within this landscape. So. I think there's already generations who remember nothing more than life intertwined with the internet, often referred to as digital natives by scholars, for example, Legacy Russell or McHugh. Um, and for the digital native, the virtual and the real are inseparable. Uh, being takes place within this blurred reality between the digital and the physical. And in this hybrid environment, digital technology is just a structure of perception. It's an affordance that impacts our perceptions of self and being in the world. So Gail Lewis argues in the introduction of questions of presence that in this gap of presence and absence is a third space uh, where, where meaning emerges. And this space emerges and lingers with the fissures uh, between the virtual and the physical. And by Lewis's definition, it becomes this third area of experiencing. Um, so with a growing interest in manifesting as the sort of partial presence through digital traces, we must consider what kind of vessels provide room for exploring, questioning, and critiquing the values shaped by technological progress. So, I've kind of come up with this concept of the spectral broad body, and I'm not going to go that much into it, but from a fissure to a zygote and a leakage, the spectral body is born. These allegorical terms I use as, them, as sort of conceptual containers to describe the sort of origins, the implications and opportunities of this modality. So you might want to imagine the spectral body as this sort of love child born out of Mark Fisher's The Weird and Eerie and Legacy's Russell's Glitch Body. So the weird is marked by this exorbitant presence, a, a sort of, um, that exceeds our capacity to represent it and the eerie is constituted by failure of absence and a failure of presence. And this is what the spectral body kind of encapsulates. Um, in the fissures that the digital creases um, allow it to permeate through, it becomes a sort of zygote, an um, enmeshment of this presence and this absence, and it gives it a potential to become a leakage 
that transgresses networks. It becomes a sort of passage from um, singularity to multiplicity. It's very sort of uh, philosophical and we're gonna move away from that um, landscape soon enough. But I wanted to speak a little bit about um, how this concept has been spoken in the um, in media theory uh, in, within this landscape. And Sherry, Tal Tur Sherry Turkle's concept, for example, of alone together, likens this sort of modality to the anatomy of modernist sociologists. It says that it is taking us away from the presence and putting us into a different landscape. However, what I think it neglects is the sort of emancipatory qualities provided through this digital diaspora. So Glissant says that, you know, a diaspora is the passage from, again, unity to multiplicity. When one consents not to be a single being, but attempts to be many beings at the same time. So it's through this sort of veil of this multiplicity that what uh, feminist theorist Russell calls the sort of cosmic corporeality. Um, this allows us to sort of have this fluid occupation of space and exploration of the self. So I consider the spectral body as this, it's this sort of like philosophical concept, but also something that sort of figuration that can be embodied. So imagine we can step into this cyber, uh, this spectral body. And I'm using the verb bodied because bodied in its definition, if you look it up, is giving material from for something that is quite abstract. So through this sort of you know neutric figuration that embodies this phenomenon, I have created this sort of cyber feminist Lenore, void of its racial, gendered, and classist inheritances that it shares and uh, that it shares from its predecessors but operating rather in the meshes and presence of absence. It is a sort of figure, a way of seeing, a sort of thinking tool to imagine the sort of emancipatory uh, states of this presence and absence. So I refer to that as the spectral body. And that's very important as we kind of go on to the next part of the presentation. Um, because I'm gonna be looking at different spectral bodies that already exist in the digital ether. So, as a spectral body, I am a zygote. I make use of the hy digital hypervisibility, yet I remain an error, defying normative constructs of presence and existence. I strive to become a leakage, leaking through existing assemblages and manifesting as a haunting. I explore myself through the digital material, stretching, reworking, and viewing its infrastructure as an architecture for dialogue. So I want to devote this part of the lecture in situating this sort of cyber-feminist species in current um, creative art practice. I'm going to zoom into the personas, alter egos, and fictionings of selves that are currently being used and unveil this sort of what I call this rich tapestry of artifice, play, and collective consciousness. So today, as your cyber-feminist cyber guide, I'm taking you through the digital wilderness through the spectral, through the weary, through the weird and eerie, the ultra smooth and the extra murky, as a promise of an odyssey, lures me into this digital ether that I once again want to explore. So for today, I want us to note this, notice the landscapes of the digital ether, to hop on my rickety sort of rowboat that we've got here, um, look into the skies, look into the forests and waters, and to start noticing the fictionings emerging all around us. The angels in their enlightened skies, the girls colonizing the spaces of overexposure, the cyber witches residing in the fissures of the digital and the natural, sharing the forests, lakes, and lands with the cyber nymphs and cyber priestesses. As we traverse the wet, the mossy, and the muddy, do not disturb the swamplings or the Cthuloid zygotes. So from angels to swamplings, we trace the lineage of spectral bodies that have emerged from this digital ether. And we will look at the cultures and what Sue Thomas calls this technobiophilia, this life and lifelike process that appears within technology. So what is becoming of us and what are we mutating into? So what is it to be a girl 
As one who tactically submits to the wills of the digital algorithm, vying for both privacy and visibility through a delicately real performance of identity. The girl emerges in the landscape of cyber baroque, the pink junkie wonderland, where you might hear her echo Lana Del Rey's words, who's doper than this bitch, who's freer than me. And with a vengeance, girls got digital and used the language of the new techno culture to create their own conceptual vanguard. The girl, existing in the wet space that is the internet, adopts fluidity and illusion in her online performance. As baby girl Esther Feeder says, the online girl fashions herself as a character both real and saturated. We also follow the top girls, Alex, Chico's Everyone is a Girl Online, and once again, Esther Feeder's Everyone is a Girl, to notice very closely that these descriptions are very close to the description of the cyber body. Chico goes on to say, the girl is simply emptified of traditional humanist traits to make room for something else. At best, she's just simply enjoying herself in the junk society has given to her. She's a living currency, she's a war machine, she's a technique of self, driven by the desire to be desired. As opposed to the mainstream narratives of female empowerment, and their sliding scale of access to power and resources, the girl is far more politically is in a far more politically ambivalent state. We must consider her as a sort of symbolic category, unfixed from biological sex or social gender. So a girl can engage in girl blogging in which the hypertextual leakages of online spaces become a watering ground for performances that perverse time and space. In this project, we aim to record and weave the thought done by girls online as, as their, as their predecessors in cyber feminism. So here Esther Feeder says, I'm not a creative, I'm not a content creator, or an artist, I'm a princess in a tumblerina. Through my writing and self-characterization, I world build a window to a post-wage labor life where lingering self-mythologizing Poetizing and co-creating and pondering can form a sort of part of daily habits where the capacity for dreaming is not regarded as destructive or inefficient. So the girl kind of becomes an inhuman category. The girls are closer to the machine condition, says Bogna Connor, an assistant professor of media theory and co-director of the AI and Culture Research Center at NYU Shanghai. She notes that the terms closer to the machine or inhuman are not necessarily derogatory. We are experiencing the inhuman or post-human version of cyberfeminism, where patriarchy by where patriarchy by neglecting women to the status of machines, objects, or NPCs accidentally creates an unpredictable and potent affinity between women and technology. So moving on. I have beautiful princess disorder. I'm so clear-pilled, I can see through the matrix. I'm not left-wing or right-wing. I have angel wings that grow whenever I transcend into space. Recently, some popular TikTok and Instagram accounts have struck a collective nerve with their embodiment of a mass voice that's ecstatic, enlightened, girl-coded, letting us know that we're simply not worthy of them. In 1999, T. Quinn, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, wrote of the persistent desire to be empty or delete one's physical form as the angel complex. These angels go on to describe empty angels created creators without a creator, mediums without a message. We wander through the abysses. And with their bodies either having no material form or wings so powerful you simply Feel, feel like a cotton ball. They fly high above the fog of capitalism without any attachments whatsoever. Unbelievable Dawn presents a beautiful landscape of this spectacle. So rather than traces of it um, and the angelic realms where only the cyber, cyber, cyber angels might reach. So this duo goes on to tell me cyber angelism is a part of it, but also we remain critical of it in some ways. 
If we look further, we might notice a shape-shifting genderless post-human visual experiment using AI tools to mold the digital model <coughs> of their face with different individuals in other databases. They become a mosaic. Can you sing for us? I ask. I glitch myself with different visual styles, different species, different living environments for a result that is relatively limited and not stable. My shape-shifting is full of many surprises. Without a singular form or shape, the Lexi Lai embodies the cyber angel, ungraspable by the human and communicating with us through different virtual sleeves. So let's step on land a little bit. I feel something pulling us to there, um, and you know, you always hear the forest whispers. So we are entities with digital extensions. We are a group of seekers that gather to worship, appreciate and give retrospect to the lost digital technology of today. Let us heal through technology. Let us perform technocratic rituals so that we can realize that technology is not cold, it's not dead, but rather an appendage of our bodies, our minds and our souls. Digital witchcraft is an ascent of traditional witchcraft that uses technology and social media as a ma magical medium for connection and myth-making. Unlike the witches of 18th century Europe, the cyber witch becomes a self-empowered and self-reflexive position. The implications of this abusive regression gave rise to a feminist reincarnation of the witch, who redeems its voice, agency, and situated knowledge. Of course, following Silvia Frederici, our mother cyber witch, we are reclaiming the figure of the witch, allowing her to live on in a different plane of existence, where the tools of the cyber witch are that of the digital realm. So Lucy Hott's Cyber Witches Manifest was a prime example of how historically violated witches transform into a vessel of empowerment, a mythology to improve the world's livability, and a myth-making process that utilizes magic as an art for changing consciousness at will and renewing the world. Witchcraft, on the other hand, employs the strong narrative component of witchcraft to create a liberatory practice offering tools for storytelling and community survival. So here you can see some emoji spells from Tumblrina Cyber Witches. Um, so as cyber witchcraft foregrounds the body and pays attention to intentions, it offers opportunity to explore how values can rapidly change in a volatile environment and where we might want to explore rather preferable futures. Functioning against patriarchy, obviously Elon Musk here as well, neo-capitalism and consumerism, witchcraft imposes working through the existing of, to, working through the existing to create means for growth, healing and resurgence in the times of the anthropocene and the capitalcy. So here you can see some um, sigils as well, and existing practices that are happening in different uh, different groups of cyber witches, that of Tumblr, that of Facebook, and also cyber witches that are rather creating their own personal um, digital archives. So by offering new perspectives of employing familiar objects and practices in a radical way, witchcraft has the capacity to denaturalize society to reveal ways that society is perhaps governed by artificial forces, such as the capitalist rhythms of 24-7, the estranging participants from the idea of maybe the normal. Like, what is the normal, really? So the ability to denaturalize and defamiliarize um, objects, social practices, or even digital media, allows the audience to abandon preconceived notions of usability and rather view the social politics of technology and see them as temporary and possibly changeable. So on expertise of cyber alchemy, I turn to Sally. Sally is a cyber alchemist, an unalienated haptic avatar that functions as a mediator of virtu virtuality, a cyber medionix fembot. I get hit by the wave of sparkling uh, cow emoji and askai as that emanates from them. It feels so soft and smells so sweet. Um, she tells me Sally and her aesthetic is 
something that initially were calling to me. I was urging to embody the alternative techno avatar, as well as having a space to where my unconscious went wild, to discover things in different ways. So in this sort of feedback loop with fictioning herself, an embodied, pa embodied practice of performance and development of sonic and haptic technology merges. Sally was and is being formed, as well as having resonance with my own personal psychomagic in the process, she says. After spending some time with Sally, <clears throat> sorry, I realized that Sally is a signo feminist at heart, using tech to create some more alienation. By that mean alternative realities through creating technological interfaces that puts them into play with a cyber mystical fantasy. So in the coven, we also meet our sister um, Geneva Petrosi, which cannot go unnoticed. This digital witch reclaiming the archetypical role of the sorceress as a healer, a political rebel, has been sharing her teachings for a while. So her funeral for digital data is a blessed, blesses us with a shrine for data loss, allowing us to perform a very specific grief, the one we experience with our technologies. On quiet winter evenings, you can find her bimbo cursor paradise whilst reading a text write, written by, in conversation with her own predictive keyboard, she and her algorithm narrate, narrate what it's like to become a femme body on the internet, what it's like to navigate this realm, made to extract, to censor, to eat you. She knows what it is to be a witch in the age of, age of capitalist surveillance. And she, if you ask herself, she can also give you a read, reading for a small offer. Cyberwitch Carolina Linkevica, sorry, I'm very hard to pronounce, utilizes the body and vessel for spirit downloads. I express in a magical world which is populated by my right myriad creatures, each personifying a range of theories and mythos and emotional histories, continuously evolving an incantation and ecstasy in collaboration with spirits. In our coven, we work with and through digital material to reflect on our bodies and identities and how they're becoming enmeshed with digital technologies and how those enmeshments can allow us to manifest our hopes, intents, and values. So let's work, walk a little bit further where the forests blend with the rivers, where wood, shells, and moss prevails and our feet start feeling the soil underneath. So amongst the cyber witches, the cyber priestesses and the cyber uh, cyber nymphs, um, uh, uh, priestesses, the cyber nymph, uh, nymph evolves, and the cyber nymph holds many connotations. For example, to mythology, to folklore, as a sort of mysterious female shape shifting presence, which now occupies more than just the forest. I always imagined I could be the small dancing mushrooms in Fantasia in another life with little sparkles and dewdrops surrounding me. In the ethereal softscapes and queer digital environments emerges a cyber nymph, going by the name Marissa, today present with us as well. Queer femme shy baby, forest nymph, an immaculate posture that smells just so good you fall into a trance that she starts telling you. I exist between realms of the digital and the physical, and outside of them as well. Nymph brings it back to an idea of softness and slowness and a connection to the natural ethereal, uh, ephemeral word that grounds us. Cybernymph fits with my existent, existence and acknowledgement as a cyber being, somewhere between, the, between Legacy's Russell's glitch body and Donna Haraway's Camiria. So snap out of it, no more trances, visiting the nearby shri uh, shrine, you might you might and you will hear priestesses. Uh, so you might hear impromptu wh uh, whispers by the priestess, a deity that might choose divination from. So this artist becomes a priestess as a sort of speculative myth-making spiritual system, welcoming the audience to activate, activate sorry, the shrine installation supported by underwater contact mics 
and real-time sound synthesizers. She goes on to tell us, I am the cyber priestess, priestess sorry, <laughs> of a future mythology, an oceanic prophecy I speak, a tech magic I make. Water moves, water leaks and drips from streams of web through cables underneath the ocean. My consciousness circulates in eddies. I bring voices of the deep, deep, deep end, and my ritual transforms breaths into waves and humans into oceans. Cells dissolve into the water, signals emerge, becoming the awareness of the, of the ocean. So you might also see long, ultra-smooth white tails flicker in the water. Sweet siren voices tell you, deepen your connection to this intoxicating aquatic world. Let the rhythm of the waves ignite your soul and awaken your eco-conscious spirit. You're not just a guardian, but you're also a lover of the waters, a vital part of the seductive movement. Wet Me Wild and Underwater Archivist introduce themselves as a cyber nymph duo, hydrosexuals that come together into the world through water and explore their sexuality through wetness. They go on to say, our reproductive system is distributed by microplastics. We die dry without water under conditions of global warming. Be aware, as you might see our capitalist actions, be aware as you might see our capitalist actions hurting more than just the species on land or the ones you might see in National Geographic. In 2024, you need to be girl mostly girl. You need to be girl wrestling, you need to be girl lounging, girl laying down on the floor of the forest and slowly being absorbed by nature. So you hear these pre preachers, they're evolving, we are resting, we are rotting and regrowing in 2024. So are these preachers from the swarmings, the cyber nymphs or the Cthulhu Lloyd beings? It does not matter, you see one starts blending into one another. We share the same environment. It's really hard not to become a unity here. So the swampling is hard to distinguish from its environment. It adopts its characteristics. It blends in like a chameleon. The living and the non-living becomes wine, one. The voices you hear come from a multiplicity, not from one, but from a collective consciousness. How dare you dry me, drain me? Vile land builders, rain shadow darkling agriculturists, industrial pump pumpers, murky medicine swamp, and contains this word spell called oak balls and eel skin. And it voices the ang anger and sort of desolation of the wetlands and the swamps that are historically and currently being drained, polluted, and mistreated. So, sporadically, also emerging from their murky and mossy motherland, Filippo. Um, Chi Lelli tells us stories of birth and rebirth and growth. Taking on girl mossing to another level, they give insight into what futures might it produce when, it's, when we start taking resting, rotting, and regrowing a little bit more seriously. So lastly, we stop to observe the embryos of Cthulhu Koi witchcraft. Using AI tools to blend, glitch, and merge tentacle, formless, technobiological bodies, this inhumanity chamber becomes a multiplicity, fertilizing and producing digital species, to then release them into the digital ether. By reproducing within this swarm and, this Cthul and with this you know, Cthulhu uh, predecessor, this artificial intelligence reproduces faster and multiplies even quicker. So welcome to my girl odyssey through spectral bodies. You have met my family of digital spectral bodies that have birthed from the digital ether. You can return now to wherever you come from. However, we will still probably stay in the wetness and the mossiness and the digital. As today, we delve into the cyber feminist past and present. We discard the thought of authenticity. The internet and its extensions become a realm of imaginings, of visions, of fictionings of self. As we traverse the clarinet, the web available to us, we start seeing the ether littered with these new species, 
sure many of these might be aesthetics or TikTok trends or waves of escapism. However, with individuals creating and embodying and manifesting these personas, we can no longer treat these as mere aesthetics. We have to consider what values do these bodies embody? Like who identifies with them? And what reason, for what reasons are they even being used? So our fictionings of the self, our girl attitudes, um, are these aesthetics of techno-biophilia, ways of escapism from the turbulence of our times or resistance against new capitalist values? So existence in this context is very deeply political. It's demanding action by making possible futures visible and also while reflecting on them. It calls for this need to experiment with ways of developing new and distinctive worldviews. And it often, you know, thinks about different beliefs, values, ideals, hopes, and also fears of today. So reducing these subcultures to merely microtrends on TikTok, something like co-opting, like co-opting for aesthetics or other subcultures, like it just completely far forgets about the ugly politics and values that are tied with it. By understanding these figures, we can also start understanding the environments that shape us and how do we move within the conditions that like and like that place us in sort of um, vessel us within them. So I think the experience of the self as other or othered in these spaces can be quite uncanny. It's quite intriguing or even emancipatory. And as Zers myself, I play with my body as a tool for storytelling and for externalizing my feelings visually. It becomes an opportunity to recognize myself with the digital material and to explore the reflections of my, um, on my sort of digital presence and identity. I myself have chronicled my evolution of thought through performances, through films and haunted operating systems. And using this persona of Zeris and the clan of my cyber witches and eco priestesses, I meditate on the limitations of my physical body, on the consumptive relationship the human species has with nature, and the cyberist behavior already present in our everyday. Uh, interactions with informa information technology. So Cyberwitch Gonzali reminds us, where do I end and where does my lore begin? It's clear now that we're makers of our own mythologies. In our hyper-remediated digital landscape, we are main characters, we are side characters, we are NPCs navigating our way through the infinite scroll. Mid-accelerating technological advancements through chatboards, deepfakes, and AI-powered datasets. This identity creation will begin to sort of resemble magic. There will be more tools at our disposals, and those tools will allow us to transmutate at will. So that's where I would like to end for for now. I think there's a lot more to speak about this, but I think we can move on to the panel discussion. So thank you so much.